I bought a beautiful new 10 foot long aquarium from Custom Aquariums about four months ago, and it was expensive. So what do I think about it now? Initially when I bought this Custom Aquariums tank, I was just, I was blown away by everything about it. The quality was incredible. And that's what I was going for because when you have this much water in a tank in your house, and this is on our main floor, this isn't in a garage or anything like that, you don't want to have a leak all over the place. So I wanted to make sure that I was going with the best possible option and this meant it was gonna cost a lot. I and mean, there's no doubt this aquarium was expensive. But at the time, you know, I went through everything and I was really impressed with it, but it's been four months now. And I've had time to experience the tank a little bit and find any flaws that might have popped up. And have any flaws popped up? I'll show you. And I'll also show you what I think about the tank now after having it for so long. But you let me know, do you think this was a wise investment spending this much money on a tank when I could have got it for less somewhere else? Well, let's get into it. You're probably wondering how much I spent on this tank in the sump. Like I said, it cost a pretty penny. We're talking about just over $8,000 retail. Now you have an idea about the expense to get a tank of this quality. A few things I've noticed about San Quentin, that's the name of this tank. A few things I noticed right away were the quality of the frame and the silicone at the corners. The frame is solid and heavy duty and it has reinforced corners, which is very reassuring in a tank this size. The silicone job is flawless compared to my little Aquion tank I currently have my Ambuna boys in. Perfect lines and I love the black. But I think the tanks at PetSmart are also now using black silicone. The tanks just aren't as nice and I wouldn't trust them nearly as much. Now you're looking at the seams on my 75 gallon Aquion tank that houses my Ambuna. It's clear silicone and you can see a difference in the quality just by taking a quick glance. The superior silicone job is really important to me, especially on a tank this size, because I'm no king of DIY and I don't want to be undergoing huge repair projects or building my own tank when the silicone fails. I want it to last as long as possible. Custom Aquariums has a limited lifetime warranty on the tank too, but there's something that you have to do in order to take advantage of that. You have to buy one of their stands and then you also have to use the pad that comes with it or otherwise there is no warranty on it. And I obviously did not use their stand. I'm using the pad, but I made my own stand to save a lot of money and it did save a lot of money. So I don't get that lifetime warranty. But here's another thing about that warranty is if the tank decides to leak and it's because of their craftsmanship, you actually have to you know, pack this thing up and packing up a, a tank this size with this much weight and getting it back to them without it being in a broken shambles when it arrives, that would be a real, a real pain in the ass. And I don't even know if I'd be able to do it. I don't think I could probably pack it well enough to get it there without it being just broken glass when it arrives. And then you also have to pay for it to be shipped back. And shipping on these things isn't gonna be cheap. So I don't know, I mean, the, the warranty's good and it makes you feel good about the quality of the tank, but I, I don't know if I ever would have used it just because of all the trouble trying to get it there and then the expense of getting it there and back. If I went with acrylic like I did with Alcatraz, my 240 gallon tank, then that would mean even less worrying about the leaks from the seams, but all that stress would just be reallocated to my fear of scratching the acrylic, which is unbelievably easy to do. Although I've gotten better at keeping scratches down to a minimum, there's still that fear, you know, underlying every time I touch the acrylic, am I gonna scratch it? I do have a video on keeping those scratches down to a minimum if you're thinking about getting an acrylic tank or you already have one. That video is gonna be in the upper right corner for you. A really cool thing about this tank is that your less expensive tanks don't have removable braces, and this one does. You just unscrew them and you can take them off to fit anything large in your tank. Subscribe or someone dies. Ding ding. Just remember that you cannot remove these unless the tank is completely empty. If it has water in it, then you might have a huge disaster on your hands, and you might never get the brace to fit back into place again. I also love the glass lids on this tank. Every time I open them up to feed the fish, it's like I'm watching an ASMR video. If you don't know what that is, check out ASMR. Oh my gosh. You might not know this, but glass has iron in it, and the thicker the glass, the more the iron darkens it. And if you look at the edges of your glass aquarium where it meets with the panels on the side, you can see that it looks kind of greenish and dark. That darkness will make your aquarium look less vivid and clear from the front. When you buy a custom aquarium's tank, you have the option to upgrade your glass to low iron, which makes it comparable to the clarity you get with acrylic tanks, which is like you're looking directly into the water with no panels at all. 
I chose to upgrade to low iron glass on both sides and the front panel, and I'm really glad I did. Another upgrade option is tempered glass, so if something strikes it with the right amount of force, it won't shatter into a million pieces. I did some research on tempered glass with aquariums and I decided just to opt for regular glass with the low iron upgrade for San Quentin. Will I live to regret that decision? You know, possibly, but I don't think I will. I bought the tank in a package with this seamless sump, and so far it's been good, and I love the extra water volume. Many of my smaller fish in here are going to get really big. We're talking like 10 to 14 inches. And those big guys are going to be creating a lot of detritus. So having that extra water volume will really help in keeping that water nice and healthy. I'm looking forward to having to remove less of the water during water changes because of all that extra dilution. The tank itself is 435 gallons and the sump adds another 75 gallons or so. I can't remember the exact number, but it's right around that. If I had four FX6 canister filters on this thing, I'd only be looking at adding about 20 to 25 gallons of extra water volume to the tank. Plus, I'd have all those extra intakes and outputs in there, and if you noticed, I don't have much in this tank at all except for my wave maker and the sump intakes and outputs, which are at the top of the tank, so they're not really an eyesore. They don't extend all the way down to the bottom of the tank like the FX6 intakes would. There are a few things that I wish I'd known when talking to the rep at Custom Aquariums about getting it ordered though. When I was talking with Custom Aquariums about getting the sump all set up and ordering the parts and everything, I wasn't advised that there were other options for the valves. And so I ended up with the budget valves, not knowing that they were budget valves. And it, they're really, really hard to move. They're extremely stiff. And just a slight turn is all I need to make it so that the flow is perfect and you want it to be just right. But instead it goes all the way and then I gotta try to get it back and it goes all the way the other way. And I, and I was even trying to do this with one of them and, and it just broke. And now I have just a, a nub where I have to use some pliers and turn it. So I would have appreciated having the option to upgrade these to a better quality valve. And also I was having a little trouble with the pumps, pumping the water back into the tank. But now I have some 7.0 C-shape pumps that I'm gonna put in there and I think that'll solve the problem and should get things going just fine. Right now, it's operating with just one pump and that's okay because I hardly have any fish in here of any size, so there isn't a lot of waste to deal with. The other thing that I would have liked to have known but wasn't told about is that the different sections of the sump are connected by these tubes. And mine are pretty small in diameter, but you can get larger ones that allow water to flow more freely between the sections, which I won't get into the details, but it would have been very useful in my scenario. So if you're ordering a tank from Custom Aquariums, make sure you ask questions about upgrades on at least those two things. Here's a problem that I hadn't expected with my sump at all. You hear that? That's a cricket that built its home underneath my sump, and it sings to me every single night. Yeah, it isn't an amazing experience. Sounds like we're camping inside our house every night. And watching TV just isn't the same when you have to watch it with your little friend serenading you from the insect world. Other than the issues with the sump, nothing else has really come up so far. And it's nice not to be expecting it to because of the faith you have in the company that made it. Custom Aquariums has a really good reputation and that's important to me. But you might not have huge aquariums like this. You might just have smaller ones. And would I spend the extra money on a smaller aquarium like my 75 gallon Imbuna tank now that I know how good this tank is? If I had lots of money and I was sure I was gonna be staying in the hobby for decades, then I probably would. As it stands now, I have my cheaper little tanks and I just plan on buying a new one every five to seven years so I don't have to worry about the leaks coming from the corners of the tank nearly as much. Do I ever regret spending the kind of money I did on San Quentin for a tank this size? Not at all, and I would do it again in a second. Let me know what you think about the difference between custom made tanks and the budget ones you find at the big box stores. Until next time, that's a wrap.